Hello, and welcome to the EPA exhibit here in Washington, D.C. Over the past 50 years, our nation's environment has changed radically for the better. EPA established this exhibit to preserve the many unique challenges we have faced so that all generations of Americans can understand the important role EPA plays in protecting our environment. It's difficult for most younger Americans to imagine the state of our environment during the 1960s and 70s. Contaminated rivers were actually catching on fire. Many species of birds, including our national symbol, the bald eagle, were on the verge of extinction and public health was endangered in communities exposed to toxic chemicals in their air, water, and lawn land. One of the highlights of my career at EPA was leading the team that created this space. To offer you a taste of what you'll find during a visit to the exhibit, I'd like to point out just a few of my favorite sections and artifacts. A prime example that showcases the terrible danger caused by pollution was the Cuyahoga River in Ohio. It was so polluted with oil and industrial waste that it caught on fire at least a dozen times. It wasn't until 1969 when a fire damaged two railroad bridges that national attention turned to water pollution issues. Things weren't much better in highly populated areas. Residents living in cities like Los Angeles, New York, and Pittsburgh endured a blanket of heavy smog, often resulting in respiratory and other health issues. In the early 1970s, air pollution was perhaps America's most visible environmental problem, and something had to be done. That same year, President Richard Nixon signed the National Environmental Policy Act, beginning what he called the Decade of the Environment. On December 2, 1970, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency was established. EPA consolidated most existing environmental federal research, monitoring, and enforcement activities into one agency charged with protecting public health and the environment. The EPA also carries out and enforces environmental laws, sets national standards, studies environmental issues, and responds to natural and man-made disasters. One critical thing to remember is that everything we have done since our founding in 1970 is based on a strong scientific foundation. Our collective efforts resulted in a remarkable string of congressional legislation like the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act and the Toxic Substances Control Act, all passed within the first decade of our agency. Early in EPA's existence, evidence clearly indicated that air pollution posed a serious threat to millions of Americans. The Clean Air Act led to new technologies like the catalytic converter and smokestack scrubbers, American innovations that cut car emissions, slashed power plant pollution, and changed the world. One of the EPA's most successful voluntary partnership programs aimed at helping to reduce harmful greenhouse gases is the Energy Star program. It was launched in 1992 to help consumers identify the most energy efficient products. In 1996, the EPA partnered with the U.S. Department of Energy to expand Energy Star into appliances and lighting. Today, that little blue star can be found on over 75 different product categories in thousands of commercial buildings and industrial plants and millions of homes in the U.S. and abroad. This is one of the marketing tools that I helped to create to promote energy efficient lighting, one of the many components of the Energy Star program. This bottle of polluted water from Boston Harbor dates back to the 1980s. You see all of the filth at the bottom of the bottle? That's because for nearly 400 years, Boston Harbor served as a dumping ground for raw and poorly treated sewage. When it rained, human and industrial waste gushed into the harbor. In the mid-1980s, litigation by EPA and environmental groups launched the Boston Harbor Project, where 3,000 workers built a state-of-the-art sewage treatment plant. Two decades later, Boston Harbor is one of our greatest environmental success stories, with popular urban beaches, healthy wildlife, and an economic boom along the shoreline, all driven by clean water. Today, Americans depend on 152,000 public drinking water systems for the more than 1 billion glasses of tap water we drink each day. Under the Safe Drinking Water Act, EPA has established standards for more than 90 contaminants. Compliance data show that more than 90% of the nation's water systems 
consistently meet those standards. Protecting bodies of water, both large and small, is one of EPA's important responsibilities. In 2010, the BP-operated Deepwater Horizon oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico exploded, killing 11 workers and causing the largest oil spill in history. The EPA joined states and other federal agencies in the emergency response, environmental data collection and analysis, and cleanups. Enforcements against BP and others responsible resulted in one of the largest cases in EPA's history, securing over $20 billion in natural resource damages, fines, and penalties to restore the Gulf Coast. One of EPA's main goals is to preserve land and clean up contaminated sites to improve the health of American families and protect the environment in communities across the country. One example of this is the Valley of the Drums. In 1981, EPA removed more than 4,000 drums of potentially flammable chemical waste from a 23-acre area in Bullitt County, Kentucky. This was one of the nation's worst ever abandoned waste sites. Fifteen years earlier, the drums had caught fire and burned for more than a week, but there were no laws to address the storage or containment of toxic wastes. In the late 1970s, a state investigation led to federal intervention and spurred the creation of a national Superfund program to clean up hazardous waste sites. Since the 1970s, EPA has made recycling a priority and quadrupled the national recycling rate by encouraging consumers to reduce, reuse, and recycle the materials they use in their communities every day. Recycling saves natural resources and energy and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. In this recycling quiz panel, you can learn that food makes up 21.6% of materials landfilled and incinerated annually. EPA and the U.S. Department of Agriculture have set a goal to reduce wasted food by 50% by the year 2030. Pesticides were once seen as a farmer's friend, but midway through the 20th century, scientific evidence of the dangers of pesticides began to mount. In response to Rachel Carson's 1962 book, Silent Spring, President John F. Kennedy announced that his administration would study the various public health and environmental questions about pesticide use. Over time, the EPA gained the authority to evaluate chemicals before they were introduced into the marketplace and to improve pesticide safety standards. Thanks to the Food Quality Protection Act, EPA ensures that all pesticides used on food in the U.S. meet stringent safety standards. I hope you've enjoyed learning about EPA's history and accomplishments. There's so much more to learn about in the exhibit, and I hope you'll take the opportunity to visit it in person one day. Thank you.